Welcome to Three Point Play Sports, home <laughs> of uh, fantasy betting and reality. Uh, I'm here. I'm Lewis Standridge. I'm here with my co-host Kyle Verska, who is uh, fresh off another terrible week. Why do you make me do this? I mean, look, this is the name of the game. Even after these terrible weeks, we come back and show our faces. Yeah, uh, but like, I I didn't want to ever start this podcast to begin with years ago, but here we are, and you just keep dragging me in. <laughs> Uh, Terrible. Yeah, so now's probably a good time to fade our picks if you're not already. I know I'd, I'd fade Kyle's. Do uh, you well, want to tell us how we tell everybody how we did last week? Well, uh, I went four and ten. I know you did better than that, but I don't know exactly how well you did. Six and eight. Okay. Good First job by you. sub 500 week of the year. I'm sure we'll hear that a few more times in this podcast. Um,. Locks last week, I had Cowboys, Chiefs, Rams, went 1-2. and two. You had Panthers, Chiefs, Niners, also went 1-2. and two. The double lock, though, 1-0, and oh, baby, because we just had a completely garbage line. <laughs> but 1-0, and oh, baby. Um, Thursday night, I had the Jets. You had the Colts just almost with one of the great all-time backdoor covers from the Jets. <laughs> Colts intercept a pass, I think, in the end zone in the final uh, seconds. Yeah, to- it was like the five-yard line. Close yeah, enough. win by two scores. Dog of three and a half or more to win outright. I've won back-to-back weeks. I had the Falcons, and then you had the Panthers. That did not work out for you. I do think that if you'd known Sam Darnold was playing, he you probably would not have chosen the Panthers. Yeah, I feel like that was almost unintentionally uh, you know, backfired because I think they would have had a better chance to win with P.J. Walker. But Well, that was what I talked about on the podcast. I was like, you know, I just give me the high variance. We know what we're getting with Darnold, and then you throw Darnold to Belichick again anyway, and it's just awful. Um, <laughs> high scoring teams. Do you remember who we picked last week? I think I had the Rams. No, I had the Rams. Or the Bills. <laughs> you yeah. had the Bills. Yeah, nice. <laughs> and they were both just completely awful, but I won that again. Uh, you won the week, and. Geez, these week to week bets were just awful, Lewis. I don't even want to recite them. I had Dak at three hundred plus passing yards. <laughs> you laugh at me. You had Bills with six or more touchdowns. Yeah, they scored six whole points. <laughs> yeah, nailed it. So, just a brutal week. Back to back weeks with underdogs just going crazy, man. After eight weeks or seven weeks of that not happening whatsoever. Yeah, and it, it makes this week all that much tougher because we've got some big spreads. So really, if you're expecting the favorites to bounce back, it's going to be tough pills to swallow. Um, I mean, it's just Vegas lives to take our money. What, what can we say? I, as far as that Bill's loss, did you know this is, I believe, the fourth year in a row that we've had a double touchdown underdog win outright. No, but I would. I feel like I would expect that to happen once a year. But also, like I could understand if it doesn't happen. But that was that was awful. Like the Bills should probably just be given three losses for that. I'm, I'm trying to think. Like if you actually went through and and looked at each four of those, where this one would rank because. It's just, <laughs> I want to say the Vikings Bills w- was w- the one that kicked it off maybe in 2017, 2018, uh, whichever those years was when Josh Allen was on the other side of it. Uh, it was the Vikings at home, I believe, were, were double dish da- touchdown favorites, uh, which may be even more shocking as a home favorite to do that. But uh, on the other hand, I never... W- <laughs> I mean, I just never would have guessed Urban Meyer and that awful defense keeping the Bills to six points. It's just, I don't, I mean, literally will probably never happen the rest of the season, something like that. Well, Josh Allen was great in that game. He was just the Jaguars' Josh Allen who was great in that game. (laughs) Had an interception, recovered a fumble, had another sack, I think. Uh, I heard that it was... Maybe the fourth time ever that a double-digit favorite didn't score a touchdown in in a in a loss. Oh wow! So that's something else. Yeah. awful. I mean, literally opportunities to even just tie the game, and it just like every single chance they had to screw themselves over, they did it. 
But yeah, hundred uh, percent. Enough on that. Let's go ahead and get into week ten. We're gonna kick it off with Thursday night. We we need to we need to eliminate teams first. You always forget this. I know it's your yeah. favorite part. Yeah, sure. Um, last week we eliminated uh, the Jags and Lions. So who do you want to eliminate in the AFC? Let's do. I don't know who are this. Who are the best contenders? The Jets. Great question. The Jets are certain. Well, that's the problem. Is we have eleven five-win teams in the AFC. <laughs> uh, the Dolphins, the Texans, or the Jets. Yeah, let's do the Texans. Okay. Not that it matters, at least for a few weeks. <laughs> NFC. We uh, got rid of the Lions, so we're looking at Bears, Vikings, Niners, Seahawks, Washington professional football team, or the Giants. Man, uh, I think based off of how this week will probably go, let's eliminate Washington. So sad. We had all the hype coming into the year, and week 10, they're out. Isn't it, it almost works out better for them, though, this way, because... They were going to be stuck at like 500 and just go into next year with not a high enough draft pick for a quarterback. It might not actually matter because of the crop of quarterbacks that we have coming in, but at the very least, they'll have a shot at the one of the top two average quarterbacks coming out in the draft uh, to potentially build around. So better than not having anybody new going into next year. Should they just trade for Aaron Rodgers? And this is going to be one of the three times I mention Aaron Rodgers on this podcast. I mean, I, I suppose. I think the thing is is uh, that really we haven't seen exposed this year as much. as I, I've seen some numbers and statistics say that Rodgers is definitely on the bottom third of quarterbacks when when the pressure is, is on, when the offensive line is not – excelling and so that leads me to believe if he doesn't get into the right situation next year assuming he leaves the Packers that that could really you think he might still be on the Packers next year I, I mean I don't know I, if you would have told me Aaron Rodgers would be going through what he's going through now two weeks ago I would have thought that would be super bizarre so anything is possible Who's Especially more seeing Jordan Love suck. <laughs> that was not a good Who's song. more likely to be on Washington next year, Aaron Rodgers or Deshaun Watson? Oof. Probably Deshaun Watson. I think you'd fit in with that culture over there. Ooh, shots. Yeah. Yikes. All right, so we got our eliminations? We do. Okay. We do. All right, let's go ahead and kick off Thursday night. We've got a, a challenging one here. Baltimore Ravens 6-2 and two on the road to face Miami Dolphins. Two and seven, Ravens coming off that overtime win against the uh, incompetent Vikings. The Dolphins coming off their win against the incompetent Texans. Uh, Different levels of incompetence, perhaps. Uh, Dolphins here, plus seven and a half. Who do you like? Did you look at the box score of the Dolphins-Texans game? No. There were nine turnovers. Nine. How many by Tyrod? I think... Four, yeah. but the Dolphins had five and won the game. Yeah. Just, I'm taking the Ravens unless two is playing, and then I might switch and take two at a cover seven and a half. But if he's not playing, Jacoby Brissett is. You remember a couple years ago when he was on the Colts and we were like, you know what, Jacoby Brissett, he can at least get you to 500. It's not terrible. Yeah. What happened to that guy? Because it's really bad now. So. Uh, this is a total anti Jacoby Brissett pick, but if Tua plays, I'll think about it. I don't know. It, it's it's tough to really take a read because the Texans' defense has looked competent at times this year, and so I mean there are definitely times when they've looked like a bottom three unit, but um, that may just be nature of the game scripts. But I think I don't know, and and that's and that's really the big question mark here if it's Tua I might lean Dolphins but really the problem the last couple years with the Dolphins has still been that weak porous rush defense and the Ravens are a top three rushing unit even if it's Devontae Freeman which I still don't understand why Tyson 
Williams isn't getting more run, uh, maybe you can explain that to me. But I'll take well, the. I'm not there. I don't know what's happening. I mean, maybe you have a theory. I don't know. Lev Bell is even getting half the touches almost. Uh, I I think really the Ravens. I mean, it was disappointing they didn't cover against the Vikings clearly last week, but I think they come in here and I think they can run, run, run all over the Dolphins. If it's Brissett, you know, we haven't seen a dominant Ravens defensive performance in, in a few weeks, I believe. So, uh, and I know they're capable. The secondary still sucks, which you pointed out last week in the video, um, but I'm not so sure Brissett can fully take advantage of that. Maybe Waddle gets off for like 80 yards and a touchdown, but who else? So on 13 catches. Yeah. So uh, give the me new Jarvis Landry. Give me the Ravens, uh, but it's tough. It's I mean, seven and a half is a lot of points. It and it, you can't see it, but over here on the Action Network, you know, I like to keep the public betting numbers up. Dolphins only getting 13 percent of the money right now. If that stays the same or goes lower, I'll switch to the Dolphins. I like playing that contrarian number. So, I think Tyson Williams. The problem is he's a rookie, and he just generally with rookie running backs that aren't like you know big time guys. It's it's a pass protection issue. Yeah. So that's probably it. But man, Lamar's been so good for the last few weeks. Yeah, I mean, and clearly he's taken up probably more of the rushing load without a dominant rusher. So, yeah, he had almost 20 carries last week, I think. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if, if that carried over. So, yeah. All right. So which side are you on? I've got Ravens as well. All right. Uh, on to the next one. Sunday, early afternoon, Atlanta Falcons 4-4 four and four, coming off their win. <laughs> they almost blew against the Saints on the road to face the Dallas Cowboys, who were never in the game last week against the Broncos. Dallas here, minus 9.5. Lost their first game against the spread last week. It was one of the few few calls I had right last week. I I hope you enjoyed that you got that pick right while watching your favorite team just get blown out from minute five. I mean, it it was shocking. Even though I had a, a gut feeling, it was still shocking to see it come true. Probably the second most shocking thing, right after the Bills game. Yeah. It was, and that's the other thing. It's like, thank God the Bills happened because everybody would be like, <laughs> Cowboys. That was just, like, teams are entitled to have a bad day at the office. But my it's inevitable. goodness, it's, it's just really hard to see that happen against a 500 team in your home <laughs> stadium. Yeah, so I'm, I'm taking the Cowboys, actually, this week. I think this is a bounce-back week. I'm probably going to fade them going forward, but I think, you know, we've seen this team play 10 times better than they played last week. The, you know, something that Denver may have exposed, I'm not sure if it was just the way the defense was set, uh, was, you know, running the ball on the Cowboys. And I'm not sure the Falcons team are capable enough to replicate that kind of offensive strategy. I mean... The way Matt Ryan and that offense have played, and obviously the way that they've gotten to 4-4, four and four, this team is showing more levels of competence than they have in years past, and credit to Arthur Smith. But, uh, I mean, I just feel like we're going to get one more big game out of the Cowboys, and then we're probably going to see too many points uh, being laid the rest of the way. Yeah, to back up your point with the Falcons playing better, you look at their last five games, they've put up 30, 27, 30, then had a 13-point stinker against Carolina, and then 27 uh, last week against New Orleans. It's just too many points for me with a team with a offense that can move the ball really well and is putting up points against a defense that, if it's not getting turnovers, is just infinitely beatable. So... I mean, obviously it comes down to Matt Ryan. If he's terrible, then the Falcons are going to get blown out in this game more than likely. But he's been playing so well. The Falcons' offense largely has been playing very well. So I nine and a half is just way too many points, I think. Like, if the Cowboys won last week, is this line ten and a half instead? Oh, I'm sure it is. Well, I mean, credit to the Falcons because <laughs> the fact that they won 
probably right. keeps this under 10 also. I'm yeah. honestly shocked it's not closer to 7.5. I just think the Cowboys have one one last kind of uh, great game that, that why, people buy so in So why are you going to start fading the Cowboys after this game? It's just the narrative I've got in my head. I think... You know, they've gotten off to a strong start, 7-0. and Last week was a letdown. They were never 7-0. and 7-0 and against the spread. Uh, this week, I think they bounce back, and people think, okay, now I'm going to jump. I'm going to still ride that bandwagon, and then, then that number is going to continue to be inflated. So I think you get one more win out of the Cowboys this week. Here are their next four games. Home for the Falcons, at the Chiefs, home for the Raiders, at the Saints. I mean, the Chiefs game, that's going to be super interesting, and I, I have no clue how it – I mean, you could tell me almost any line, and I would believe it. I mean, Chiefs by three and a half, Cowboys by three and a half. I don't even know what I would do. In the, and we'll get to the Chiefs here in a bit, but that team looks like it could blow the doors off anybody any week like it has before. But consistently this year, you just see them not do the right thing. There is one play in particular where the Chiefs, Travis Kelsey was open on like a 15-yard crossing route, and Mahomes just like didn't even bother, and he just went for the bomb that was not even open, and it was an incomplete pass, and then they, they didn't get the first down. And I could see that all day against this Cowboys team if he takes – the, the 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 easy throws if he takes you know the running game, um, but you could just as easily this Cowboys team that's dominated the league in rushing, running all over the Chiefs. Uh, we'll get to that next week, but you could just see it. Okay, we're split on that one. Next game up, New Orleans Saints on the road to face Tennessee Titans. Uh, Saints off a disappointing win. Trevor Simeon uh, probably back at the home. On the road to face the Titans. Titans here seven and two, minus three and a half home favorites. A little surprised this number is not bigger, but I think maybe you want to give us your two cents on this one. Last week we opened the podcast, I think, or at some point we touched on this. Was you know if we were doing our top ten, how many AFC teams would be in it? Right, and. I think we said three and that the Bills would be the only one we consider for top five. Well, now the Titans are seven and two. They've beaten in like four of their last five wins have been the Chiefs, the Colts, the uh, uh, the Rams last week, and then the one for the Bills. So they've beaten all these teams here in a row. Where are the Titans? Are they number two in the league? Are they number three? Where do you have the Titans it's as in your own? fluid as anything. I, I know. I mean, I think based off just, I mean, you have to go off recency bias. Uh, I would say they've got to be, what, two or three? Bucks are number one for me. And, I mean, you can't really put the Rams ahead of them because they just beat the Rams. In Where are the Cardinals? They're the only team that has one loss. I Maybe the Cardinals, they deserve to be two. Uh, and yeah. so I put Cardinals two and Titans three. That is difficult because that goes against a lot of what I've kind of predicted this season in my, my view of the teams. But you know, yeah. you know where we're headed, right? With this, we're, we're, we're going to get, it, it's a dead cat bounce. No. Well, as far as this game goes, I'm talking about season long. We're going to get to the Super Bowl having trashed all the AFC teams because none of them can stand clear. And we're going to end up with an AFC Super Bowl champion. We're going to be talking about how, oh, NFC... It was a gauntlet. It was a gauntlet. No, I'm just... It's going to be, it's going to be like those years where you had the Patriots and then against the Giants. The Giants were like a middling team in that the NFC sucked uh, those years or was disappointing. And the Patriots come in and it's just like, oh, clearly the Patriots are going to get it. You're probably going to get the Titans or the Chargers or... I mean, the Bills take your pick of disappointing teams come out of the AFC, and they're going to be probably underdogs in the Super Bowl, and then they'll end up winning. And it's just like, what the hell? The AFC has sucked all year. I'd love to know if you could get a bet right now of will the Super Bowl champion have won its division? <laughs> More Because I just feel like the only one you could say that you'd feel really good about right now that would be a division winner to win the Super Bowl would be the Bucks. Yeah. That's 
That sounds about right. I mean, it's just a wonky season, but I... These last two weeks, man, have turned everything upside down. I think really the point I'm trying to make is if whatever the line is on the Super Bowl conference versus conference, I would take the AFC right now because you probably get good value. It might be the same in the when the Super Bowl gets here, but uh, nobody think, has any isn't faith. A, isn't that a bet you can make throughout the years? The line on the Super Bowl? Yeah, you can you can make that. And that's what I'm saying is like nobody thinks anybody from the AFC is going to be worth anything, and yeah. I would take that, but. Back to this game, dead cat bounce. I think I'll take the Saints plus three and a half on the road. I still cannot process or come to terms with this Titans defense, but if anything, I'm still convinced that the secondary sucks. Um, the secondary is bad. You just can't take advantage of them because they're rushing right. it or they're passing. But maybe is so is the antidote that you have a. But the thing here's the other thing I can't I can't really process is I thought the Bills pass offense well I guess the Bills pass offense was uh, the offensive line was the last probably really good one although I say that and then they just got ripped by Josh Allen on the Jags um, that was able to throw all over these Titans I thought the Rams had a pretty good offensive line but turns out maybe not i don't know it's still hard to comprehend but either way i think the saints offensive line still good enough i think this is much like the cowboys last week uh the titans are just due for a little bit of bad luck and uh i'll take the saints yeah i'm with you on the saints mainly because tennessee's offense was terrible on sunday night they gained like 190 yards Total. I think now they won the game overall Great. for the year. I think they've been outgained yardage wise. I I could certainly believe that, for but I, I think team. yeah, the Saints are a really good defense, and the Titans can only get by without without moving the ball for so long. Yeah. Now Trevor Simeon might just be like, you know what? I don't really want to win this game either, <laughs> <laughs> and give it away. But right now. I, I like the Saints just because the Titans, everybody counted them out last week, and they rolled into L.A. and got that huge win. Yeah, uh, this that's my first lock of the week, by the way. Okay. All right, next game up, Jacksonville Jaguars, 2-6 and six on the road to face Indianapolis Colts, 4-5. and five, uh, Jaguars coming off their, I don't know, is that a top three win in franchise history? Probably. Last they week. made the AFC title game twice? Come on. <laughs> And lost. Uh, Colts minus ten there. and a half. They're coming off uh, extra layover with the Thursday night game. Who do you like? I don't know. The Jags win over the Bills has me all kinds of scared, Lou. Uh, I like the Colts. I generally, generally take the big spreads here uh, when it's a division game, but. The Colts are so much better than the Jags. There's no way the Jags can do this two two games in a row. And if they're only going to score nine points, I don't think they can cover this game. So Colts, long layoff at home. Jags just having won their Super Bowl. No thanks. I mean the Colts. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you here. Uh, Colts all the way. I think one thing I'm going to try and keep an eye on going forward is these bottom three teams trying to cover in back-to-back weeks. It's just they're so bad that it's really difficult for them to. Uh, so I'm going to take the Colts as well, minus 10.5. I think they run, run, run all over the Jags. It, it, the thing we always have to remind ourselves with the recency bias is, like, would we have taken this line before last week? And the question is yes. So last game... More, more about the Bills' ineptitude than I think the Jags. So well, the Bills just they can't run the ball. It's in Zach Moss left that game early. That undoubtedly hurt their run game because Devin Singletary is just you can't run with him. So uh, it just that's the problem with the Bills, and it's really a huge problem. I think I think that's the underlying issue with the Chiefs. But we'll get there when we get there. But you know, if the Colts love to run the ball, and the Jags love to give it up in the run. Yeah. Well said. Jonathan Taylor is going to run away with the rushing yards, right? Yeah, now that Henry's gone, for sure. Yeah. Uh, all right, next game up, the Cleveland Brownies, 5-4, and four, coming off a big win against Cincy. I think they're tied for the division lead now. On the road. No, they're behind the Ravens. What are the Ravens? 
seven or six and two. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Um, yeah, on the road to face New England Patriots. Patriots also five and four, coming off I think their third straight win. If this right, Patriots here minus one and a half. I'm even. I mean, we're not going to get Nick Chubb or Felton probably in this game, despite them both being vaccinated. I. I I mean, I suppose it's 50-50 if they get two negative tests in 24 hours uh, and still early in the week. But I'm going to go ahead and roll with the Browns here. I still, I'm going to keep fading the Patriots. I just think they're overplaying uh, their talent level right now. And I know a lot of that's going to be a Belichick team. But I think we are probably going to see the second half of the season, the Browns just kind of exercise themselves of the OBJ locker room presence and and really turn into a more dominant team that we kind of expected when they came into the season. So you bring up a good point with Chubb having been vaccinated and, you know, there's still like a pretty good chance he can play since we're so early in the week. But if you remember last week, Saquon tested positive for COVID, but it turned out to be a false positive. And then he didn't play anyway, so I don't know. Was that not, was that non COVID related then? I mean, I, I guess it could have been, but he was on track to play until he was hit with that COVID tag, and then it was a false positive, I mean, and then he didn't play. So I don't. Half the things with the Giants don't make sense, at least. So I don't know. Daniel Jones continuing to take snaps makes no sense. Um, I'm locking the Patriots. Wow. Simply because the Browns, if it's if they don't have Chubb, they already don't have Hunt. If they can't lean on their run game and it's the Baker Mayfield's going to have to beat you, I don't feel great about that. Uh, the Patriots, you think they've been playing over their heads. I say they've been getting better. The last five weeks, they've put up 29, 54, 27, and 24 points. Cleveland is, depending on how you feel about Dallas and the Chargers, at full strength maybe the best team that they've played in that stretch. But they've shown that they can play with good teams and win these games. So I, I really like the way the Patriots have been playing. They're only a half game out of the three seed in the AFC. This continues our talk of yeah. the AFC just being completely muddled. So uh, everything's out there for the Patriots. Uh, they can, they're can they still like right there in the division. They're just a half game behind the Bills for the division as well. So Patriots growing. I like where they're at right now. All right. Next game up, the Buffalo Bills, who we've said a lot about already, uh, on the road to face the New York Jets. Jets here 2-6, and six, plus 13.5 home. Underdogs, Mike White, I'm sure will be back for this game after leaving Thursday night football in the first quarter. 13.5, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm just going to have to do it. I'm taking the Bills, minus 13.5. I think... This this team is what? Uh, just even before the Jags game, the week before, they torched the Texans, I believe. And I really think this team is more like that team than it is like the team that lost to the, they, the Jags. They, no, 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 no. They struggled to beat Miami. They beat Miami 26-11, to 11, but that game was no. like 9-3 oh, yeah, to three for a long time. I, I just think at this point... As much of a a funk breaker or a wake-up call, whatever you want to call it, I think this is the opportune time. I think Mike White is decent, but I think that Bill's defense... I mean, clearly the loss overshadows a lot, but the fact that that defense, again and again and again, being put in bad situations from turnovers, was still able to hold the Jags to nine points, uh, I think is, you know, being overlooked... I think the defense alone will dominate the Jets, and we're probably looking at two plus. Let's let's say three turn- turnovers for Mike White. If you want to side bet that one, and well, uh, is that your is that your bet of the week? Yeah, three three plus turnovers for Mike White. Maybe a, a pick six, and really just eases the Bills back into the game. I think what we also saw is the Jets last time they won a game right was against the Titans. Or Bengals. The Bengals. Um, we saw, well, okay, then that kind of destroys the narrative. I was going to say the Bills, <laughs> or the Titans, really bounced back well after losing to the Jets. Cincinnati, not so much so. So, uh, 
forget what I said about that, but I'm taking the Bills. Okay. Uh, I love Mike White getting 13 and a half points. You kidding me? Yeah, sure. Go for he, it. I, I, if he doesn't get hurt against the Colts, I wish he didn't get hurt against Colts. Obviously, we have no idea how it would have played out, but, I mean, he took him right down the field for a I touchdown. Mean, Josh Johnson played as well as Mike White could have. I, I know, but I, I have more faith in Mike White than I do Josh Johnson. But shout out to Josh Johnson for having a great game and somehow continuing to be signed. Um, <laughs> I'm taking the Jets. Too many points. It's it's a 13 and a half point home underdog in a division game against a team that hasn't played well. In my goodness, Lewis, they the Bills last three games they've gone one and two. So I I don't know what you're getting out of the Bills. If they can't, and again, they cannot run the ball. So it's like Josh Allen, you're going to have to beat us. And he's 85, 90% at best, as good as he was last year throwing the ball. So huge regression on offense for the Bills the last few weeks. And I don't know how, I don't think it's going to get any better. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, just buy those Bills futures after they win this by three then. Fair enough. All right, uh, Detroit Lions coming off a of bye, zero and eight, still looking for that first win on the road to face Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers here minus nine and a half after escaping Monday night with a win. Still, the end of that game was so wonky, and really the Steelers probably shouldn't have even even won that. Uh, what was it that uh, taunting call because <laughs> the defender roundhouse kicked in the air? Did you see that? Uh, you talking about the ref like backing up into the defender? No, I think it was a couple plays before that. Uh, oh. The Steelers had their drive extended because uh, the Bears had a stop, and then I think it was the same guy that bumped into the ref did <laughs> did a really sweet roundhouse kick in the air. <laughs> I gotta say, I like Bruce Lee or or Chuck Norris would be proud, and then he got flagged. <laughs> so. Uh, anyways, roundhouse kicks aside, uh, Steelers minus nine and a half. I'm taking the Lions here. I think coming off that bye, as m- if there's ever going to be... Well, I say this almost every time. <laughs> I feel like nine and a half is just way too many points. And for an offensive line that can keep them in the game, uh, I think previous to the bye, they were having a couple of offensive line injuries, so they weren't able to really rely on that as, as well. Uh, so I expect those guys uh, to lo- be a little bit healthier. We'll have to check their reports going into this game, but uh, I expect or I hope that... I mean, I, I think at what? Goff is due for at least a decent game, right? Not a great game, just a passable game? Or is that too much to ask? That seems like too much to ask for me. Uh, But my problem with that Monday night game was I was like, okay, Steelers up 10, just got to stop. I'm going to bed. This game's a wrap. Yeah. And then just immediately a fumble return for a touchdown. It's the only reason that the Bears were in that game. They had done nothing. Can I – and can I say on that in particular, when you're in that stage of the game and the fumble – on the punt is really like the worst case scenario and really could put the other team back in the game. Don't you just like, don't even bother or you just say, let's just not even try to return that and not even risk it. It seems like I mean, a 5% chance, much, much worse than 0% chance. Yeah. Cause that, that's the only way Chicago's getting back in that game. So just fair. I mean, don't you don't even have fair catch it. Just get the hell out of the way. Right. And then, you know, your offense, even if the offense goes four and out, like they're going to – they're still going to take a couple minutes off the clock. Right. So – and they'll at least have punted it back to, you know, the 50 or the other team's 40 or 35. So, yeah, just a terrible idea by uh, Ray Ray McLeod. Yeah. Uh, having said all that, you're on the Lions, obviously. You, you love the Lions. You lock in the Lions. No, absolutely not. Uh. I think the Steelers just run them in the ground. I want part of Jared Goff at Heinz Field. All right. I, that's that's where I'm at. It's too good of a defense for Jared Goff to do much. I mean, against. it's like I said a couple weeks ago. When the Lions win, it's going to be when you pretty much least expect it. So, I don't know if that's... And I think the, I retorted that's every week. <laughs> that's, who, who are they playing? Do you have their schedule? 
Do you know who they play uh, next? I don't, but I'm about to have it. They, I feel like their schedule actually gets tougher, starting with this one. But uh, here we go. At Pittsburgh, at Cleveland, home for Chicago, home for Minnesota, at Denver, home for Arizona, at Atlanta, at Seattle, home for Green Bay. So who's the toughest two out of those? The toughest two? Yeah. Uh, I guess it's some combination of Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Arizona, and Green Bay. Yeah. I mean, they're bound to win one of those, right? Oh, they're bound to beat one of those four teams. Yeah, like I said, it's always the teams you no, lose. Like, no. if I came into this, if okay, came into the season, beat Kirk. they're going to beat Kirk at home. That's where they're getting that win. Okay, I told you though, it's when you least expect it. Just like the Jets getting the Titans yeah. for their first win, and then the, tit- the Cincinnati Bengals for their second win. You never would have expected those. Are you? How excited are you for eleven thirty a.m. Thanksgiving morning? Bears at Lions. I mean, it's a tradition unlike any other. Why can't we kick the freaking Lions off of Thanksgiving? Who cares? <laughs> Jeez. So glad we're going to get to watch the losingest franchise ever. Yeah. Except for, like, the Browns. Oh, man. I remember last year Peterson had a big game on Thanksgiving. Um, next game up, Tampa Bay coming off a bye. On the road to face Washington, professional football team. Uh, they're also coming off a bye. Washington plus nine and a half home underdogs. I'm rolling with the dog here. I'm going to take Washington, uh, but guaranteed to flip this game 20 times. So basically, count me as on the fence for this one. Uh, Washington's secondary sucks. <laughs> and the Bucks. Is anything good on Washington? Their offensive line and their defensive line. That's about it. Theoretically is good, but they haven't done anything all year. They're still talented. Uh, I mean, what else can you say? So, I, you know, the fact that the Bucks love to pass gives me real anxiety about that Washington secondary. But the fact that this Buccaneers secondary also kind of sucks. I mean, I guess if there's any ever a game where where it, I mean, there's always going to be games going forward where teams can stay in it with the Bucks if they can throw. Uh, so, I mean, if we get a big McLaurin game here, I could really see Washington staying close. So, you, you've you buried the lead, Lou. Sure. This is, this is the Taylor Heineke Bowl. He started in the playoffs last year, his first ever start. Which I believe was so eight, as an eight-and-a-half little... dog. Yeah. So and we both, I believe, were on Washington in that game. Uh, I'm, I'm with you. I'm taking Washington, and I'm gonna sit here and look at it all week and be like, "Am I really gonna go against Tom Brady and that team that has not shown anything all season long?" But right now, yes, I'm with you on yeah. Taylor Heineke, um, and and Washington. What is going on with your boy Antonio Gibson, Kim? Can he get healthy? Is he doing better after their bye week? He played through that hairline fracture in his leg. Like, if he doesn't play, ugh. I mean, I guess that's the thing is I I said it even before the bye. It would have been beneficial probably to sit him the week before the bye instead of playing him for, what, 40% of the snaps or whatever. He was essentially the backup to McKissick. And the thing is, is like, what are, what are we doing here? Just sit him for a month. If that'll get him healthy, I guess that maybe that's what, what are they mean. playing for? We already eliminated him, so what are they playing for? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's gonna be tough going against that Bucks rush defense. So, yeah, what can you say? Next game up, uh, Dan Snyder sell the team. Can we say that? <laughs> Carolina Panthers on the road to face the Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals here at eight and one, minus ten and a half. And this Panthers team is so hard to figure out, uh, but I'm going to take the 10 and a half and just feel super gross about it. Um, maybe the key with the Cardinals, I'd, actually, I don't know. I can't figure out the Cardinals either. This one's tough because I, I constantly want to count out the Cardinals. Clearly, they're 8 and 1, so I've been wrong more often than not. But I feel like the Panthers' defense... Is, should be good enough to keep them in this game. I don't don't think they should be able to run as well as they did against San Francisco with 
uh, Panth- Panthers rush defense. So <sighs> ten and a half, and just hope that Sam Darnold doesn't throw two picks. Trivia question, Lewis. How many games has it been since Sam Darnold has thrown for 208 yards? I don't know, week two? Week four. It's been, he's five straight games under 208 I yards. Mean, he has four of those games under 178 yards. I know he hasn't thrown a touchdown in a while. Isn't that right? He was leading the league in rushing touchdowns in that Dallas game. Leading the league in rushing touchdowns. And ever since has been... Maybe the worst quarterback in the league. I was – I want a quick quick tangent here. The NFL fantasy league that we're in, full of UT fans. As far as I know, everybody in there is a UT fan except for me, which, you know, good for me. God forbid I'm ever a UT There's fan. There's a couple of Ohio State fans. Oh, that's right. They're from Ohio. I don't know how they got in the group, but that's fine. Um, Colt McCoy. With the big win last week, I was so surprised that just nobody brought that up in our Slack channel, and I was like, this is really surprising, but I didn't want to say anything about it, because then we'd get a Colt mccoy gasm, and I didn't want that either, so I just let it be. I think people, the UT alumni are so dismayed at the football team, it's, we do not want to bring up UT football at all, so. Four straight losses, first time in 10 years. Which, before that, it was probably like 25 years. Yeah, before Texas is back. Yeah, you got to love it. Uh, I'm I'm with you on the Panthers. Uh, I just, I'll take the Panthers plus 10 and a half. The deep, they, they've been bad, but they've only been blown out once, and that was somehow Dan Jones blew them out 25 to 3. Uh, I mean, last week they lost 24 to 6, but that was a defensive touchdown. Made that bigger than it actually was. So they've, they've only lost by... 10 unless you count the defensive touchdown which I guess you have to this stupid <laughs> argument by me um, <laughs> one time so as long again yes Sam Darnold's the X factor here how many times are you going to give the ball away but I'm with you on the Panthers well I mean assuming Christian McCaffrey gets more snaps just dump it off to him every time right how how even though you're not a Panther how much did you just applaud Robbie Anderson for what he did last week. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But, you know, what? we've seen that pretty regularly, right? We've seen, uh, especially wide receivers, just chew out their quarterbacks when they've been awful. And, I mean, yeah, Darnold but like, deserves every... I mean, he needs to get chewed out. Yeah, Darnold definitely deserves it. Like, a lot of the time, it's like Odell Beckham, like, chewing out somebody just for, like, not throwing him the ball, like, every play. But Sam Darnold certainly deserves it. Now, does Sam Darnold being terrible change your opinion of Adam Gase? No. Because the narrative was you leave Gase, you get better. And Sam Darnold like lived up to that for three or four weeks, and then he's been like even worse than he was with Adam Gase. It's probably just the exception. I I don't know. Maybe we just didn't we ignored uh, the Jets for so long that we didn't see how bad he was. I, I mean, the thing is, is that you have to think they're the coach. Well, for one, I think the coaches are inept on their own. The fact that they got him concussed by running him out in back to back plays to get wrecked. But I think on top of that, playing him the week after was also compounded that ineptitude. But on the other end, you have to think they're in the film room the last four weeks and going over the same stuff again and again and again. And it's just like, why is it not clicking for him? It has to be like when Jameis was with the the Bucks, And it's just like, dude, you were making the same mistake week after week after week. Stop. But if it's... It just doesn't have it in him, man. And, and the same thing is like, if it's that frustrating, why not just play P.J. Walker? I don't understand. Maybe they've just re- reached a point in their season where they're like, They've traded for Gilmore, they've traded for Henderson, and they've just realized it's not their year. I don't know. It's just a bizarre organization at this point. Yeah, well, that's the thing. is like If you don't want to win games, then continue to play Sam Darnold. He's your best chance to not win games. Yeah. Go figure. Um, next game, uh, Minnesota Vikings, 3-5, and five, on the road to face the Los Angeles Chargers, 5-3. and three. Chargers, of course, covering the week I didn't 
pick them to win. Uh, minus two and a half here. Who do you like? Love the Chargers, locking the Chargers. Ah, damn it. Go ahead, do it with no, me. Come not, on, we're one and we zero. We're one and zero on the double lock. No, you might as well, I might as well take the Vikings if I'm gonna do that. Uh, the Chargers are just the better football team all around, and they've been super tough to pin down, like, which Chargers you're going to get from week to week. But, I mean, this is, I, I said this exact thing to you last week, and thank God that they ended up covering, but it's like, anytime you pick Kirk Cousins, you don't feel great about it, but anytime you pick against Kirk Cousins, you don't feel great about it. So, I, I just I'm gonna bet on the Chargers last week who you know outlasted Philadelphia but it looked like Herbert finally kind of figured it out after a couple of weeks in the weeds and I don't feel good about Minnesota's defense at all so love the Chargers here. Yeah, I think we the Chargers secondary I think Asante Samuel is uh, I think he was injured last week so I'll have to just see the injury report but. I think if their secondary is even a little bit healthier, I feel even more confident. So I'm taking the Chargers. I mean, we have seen the issue is that rush defense. And, I mean, you saw it again last week. Jordan Howard was able to take advantage. The only difference was the Chargers offense was even better than uh, to offset that. So I think this Vikings secondary still could have potential issues and, you know, we saw Mike Williams to start the season. And now we've seen Keenan Allen come on. So now that possibly we could have both of them as a full go, I like the Chargers. I think that sec- that the wide receivers will, will just go all over the Vikings. Uh, the other thing I had questions about is I had heard rumors that Herbert might have been injured last week, but he didn't look like that bothered <laughs> against the Eagles. So... Maybe that was just uh, exacer- exaggerated. So, uh, all of that to say, I'm back on the Chargers. Does it give you any pause at all? Having you know, you brought up how bad they are against the run that they're facing Dalvin Cook this week. I mean, it definitely scares the hell out of me. But I'm just gonna bank on much like last week that the passing offense outpaces the rush defense. Fair enough. And the fact that Mike Zimmer and that offense continues to make uh, curious choices in at the end of games so next game yeah I'm, I'm just I'm just shocked it's less than three yeah uh, next game up Eagles three and six on the road face Denver Broncos five and four Broncos here minus two and a half another two and a half point spread uh, this one's tough who do you like in this one I love how you, like, every time you say this is tough, you make me go. Yeah. Um, is maybe we had a uh, Von Miller is the defensive Odell Beckham, and we just figured that out last week? I don't I mean, what, what do you do with what the Broncos did last week? They just rolled into Dallas and annihilated the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. I just – would have never guessed if you'd have told me going in last week that the Broncos were going to be up thirty to nothing on the Cowboys. I'd have been like, "You're freaking crazy! No way!" And not that like thirty to nothing is completely different than thirty to seven. You know, like you're going to tell me the Cowboys are you're like going to be in danger of getting shut out against this team. I can't believe the spread is less than three again. So this means that if it was neutral field, that the Eagles would be favored. And I don't know how that is because they're not very good. So I'm just going to take the Broncos. I don't feel great about it, but I don't feel good about the Eagles rolling in there and playing well. Yeah, uh, well, part of the reason I make you go first is uh, a lot of what you talk about uh, leads me to my decision. And you brought up the fact that that rushing offense was able to run all over the Cowboys. And I still think one of the issues with the Eagles is that rush defense. I think they might be bottom third in the league in rush defense. So if the Broncos want to replicate that same kind of game script, I think they very much have a chance to to win this game and, and you know have almost as much success as they did last week. I think... I don't really know what to make of the Von Miller stuff. Maybe... The, the thing all along was the fact that the Cooper the guy Cooper 
I think his last name is Cooper, that took his place was just good enough. Uh, which is bizarre because it seemed like the weeks before their linebacking core was really struggling with all the injuries. So it just, it, last week, as much as I picked the Broncos, it just really bizarre the fact that that linebacking core was able to show up. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you what the difference is, but it seems like maybe they've they figured it out. And, I mean, if they can run the ball, they should be able to run on the Eagles, so... I'll take the Broncos. Yeah. The Broncos are eighth against the pass and sixth against the run. The Eagles are twentieth against the run. So, like you said, bottom third. That's essentially what that is. So, if the Eagles can't run the ball, I'm not expecting Jalen Hurts to throw for three fifty to lead them to victory. I, I just right. I don't understand this line, and this is just like a classic like Vegas knows more than you line. You think? Uh, well, I mean. So you think it's a trap? You think we should take the Eagles? I, I don't. I just. I cannot fathom why this is a two and a half point spread. I just. I don't get it. Yeah. Well, I think maybe there's still some lingering thinking that Von Miller is gone. This team sucks. Yeah. Well, the Eagles suck, so <laughs> I don't know what to do. People love Jalen Hurts. Makes, well, I don't know. I great. Great. Jalen Hurts, really good dude, seems like a good leader. You know what he's not? A great quarterback. Ouch. He's fine. He's competent. If he was my if he was my team's quarterback, I'd be like, cool, we're gonna win between six and nine games. Alright. <laughs> Next game up, Seattle Seahawks, three and five on the road to face Green Bay Packers, seven and two. Um this line might be doing us a favor because if Russell Wilson is coming back and we probably get another week of Jordan Love, this line is not three and a half, right? It's probably closer yeah. to one and a half. It start. It looks like it opened at five, so it's already come down a bit. Uh, I'm taking the Seahawks and I'm locking the Seahawks. It may just be the most obvious play because Wilson is coming back in the offense. Do we know he's playing though? He's been cleared... For practice and stuff, but we don't did know you not see playing. that that short <laughs> film that he posted on social? No, please, please give me a second by second breakdown. I didn't watch it. I, I mean, I watched about four seconds of it, and I was just like, I can't take this. This is so so dramatic. It's, it's so the worst, dramatic. man. He is just so fake. He is the Drake of football players. I mean, he's been gone just about three weeks, and he just. It's it's almost as if uh, what's the NBA player the Knicks like, that that came back with a broken foot? Uh, Willis Reed. Yeah, it's, it, he's making it seem like he's Willis Reed coming back to this team and leading them to victory. Uh, and, and on the other side, the Jordan Love saga, it didn't seem like he's that good uh, <laughs> against a terrible Chiefs defense. So, I mean, it's it's tempting. To just overlook the Seahawks deficiencies and just say Russell Wilson's coming back, take the points, and that's what I'm bait, being baited into, and I'm taking it. Um, so I'm just a sucker. What can I say? Yeah. How do you how are you gonna feel if Aaron Rodgers is cleared to play on Saturday? I might I might switch to the Packers. You're locking the Seahawks with my switch. I know. It, you know, the, it's the thing is, is like if Wilson didn't do all the bizarre stuff, I wouldn't have like be second guessing myself. I could just say, look, this is still like one of the top five quarterbacks in the league, but he's got all this weird shit going on and it's distracting. Yeah, I really thought whenever you're going to tell me about the four seconds of the video that you watched that it like started like behind like Sierra walking toward what looked like you know, like a, a mine shaft or a tunnel into the side of, like she was Mary Magdalene and the stone was going to be moved and Russ is Jesus. I thought that's where you were headed because he seems it's like he would really enjoy it's that. It's possible. I didn't watch the video. Yeah. Might have. Um, I'm with you on the Seahawks if Russell Wilson's playing and Aaron Rodgers isn't. If they're both playing, I'll look at it again. If neither is playing, I'll probably stay with the Seahawks. Oh. Uh, but right now, I'll, I'll take the Seahawks. If neither is playing, I'll probably take the Packers. I can't back. God, Jordan Love was so bad. But I mean, maybe. I, I yeah. I look. 
depending on the quarterbacks in this game, I reserve my right to switch my pick. But yeah, how many times talking about like Robbie Anderson destroying Sam Darnold, like Devonte Adams could have decapitated Jordan Love with how many times he missed him while he was wide open. <laughs> so bad. If Aaron Rodgers plays in that game, the Packers probably win by 17. Absolutely. That's God, it was terrible. And uh, yeah, I mean that's a good the, this five and four Chiefs team. This this Raiders team was the team that would go toe to toe all the time with the Chiefs. So uh, having said all that, who do you like? Well, I think you're you're bringing up the Raiders forty to thirty two win in Week Five last year. No, this is it was the second one, I believe. Okay, that was thirty five thirty one. Yeah. in Vegas. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I mean that goes back to it, like. The Raiders outscored the Chiefs by three points in the games they played last year. The Chiefs can't run the ball, Lewis, and that's the problem. And I'm not one to sit here and, like, advocate for running the football. Like, I think you should throw way more than you pass, and it's way more efficient. You should do all these things. All these numbers tell you that. But if you just straight up cannot run the football whatsoever... Is it that they can or they don't want to? There's no reason to ever... They can't. I mean, it's a little bit of both. Like, Andy Reid has a history of just, like, I'm not running the football. But there's also, like, the Chiefs, like, straight up just can't do it. So, until if they can ever get that figured out, and I don't know that they can fix it. It was just an idiotic decision to draft uh, Edwards Elaire in the first round last year. Just so dumb. Uh, Until they can, like, sort of, like, run for eight yards like every sixth or seventh carry there's no reason for teams to ever sort of honor the run so the Chiefs haven't played well in so long they haven't played well since I think this was either the second half or the fourth quarter against Washington they ended up winning that game 31 to 13 but it was like 13 to 13 going into the second half or in the middle of the third quarter whatever the time was yeah that, that was the last time we saw them play well. They've been brutal since then. Uh, so I'm taking the Raiders here plus two and a half until I see that, like, the Chiefs are even 80% of the old Chiefs. And I, it's partly they can't run the ball at all, and it's partly, like, Mahomes just doesn't want to take the layup. He just wants to hit 35-footers yeah. all day long. Yeah. So until they can, like, just slow the fuck down and try to put together, like, a 12-play drive instead of trying to score in five plays, I I can't trust them. I mean, uh, we bring this – I think we brought it up the last two or three weeks at least. Uh, And and last week does not matter. It was Jordan Love in his first start, and he was terrible. I mean, he still covered – They still only scored 13 points. They covered the eight and a half that the line turned into. Which no, they didn't. They won by six. What are you talking about? No, I'm saying the Packers did. Oh well, yeah, sure, yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is uh, I mean, but despite love covering, um, I mean, this is almost seems too obvious. And I, I, I mean, much like the Seahawks, I'm being baited into it, and I'm just gonna take the Raiders plus two and a half. I'm gonna lock it because I feel really good about it. But it's almost really bizarre because I feel too good about it it's just this Raiders team has been more competent and actually one of their strengths is that secondary with Casey Hayward is it right yeah Casey Hayward and if there's one of their strengths is you know that and then of course one of the Chiefs many weaknesses is you know guarding the tight end well, hello, who's going to get probably 20 targets in this game? Darren Waller. So he's going to eat Daniel Sorensen and whoever alive. So uh, he, He's so bad. And, of course, the one touchdown Jordan Love has is on Daniel Sorensen just <laughs> blowing a coverage. I, it's just it, – that's the I, – I will say weeks like last week definitely make you second guess a lot of things, and it's just tough to kind of – find that equilibrium again uh, in that confidence. But, and that's the thing is like, this, this seems like a very straightforward, obvious take the Raiders, but 
of course, of all weeks, the Chiefs could come in here and they could win by 10, and you're going to be like, well, what the hell? You haven't shown us anything before. But if they're going to win by 10, like they're going to have to put up 35 points. And if they do that, then we're all going to be like, oh, Chiefs back. That's how we'll feel. But they, they haven't shown the capacity to have, be that team in four of their past five games. Right. I mean, they came out of a bye, and they were just god-awful. So yeah. I just you, you just can't trust them. I just but like everybody's gonna pick them because they're the Chiefs and they have Mahomes. I think that's why this line is so narrow. But cool, we'll just take your money. Keep betting the Chiefs, please. As I'm saying, it's just too obvious. It's just at this. It's just Vegas being like, thanks for the money. Look, we are nine weeks in. I think this Chiefs team is is what is they are who they are for the season, right? I think at this point, I mean, clearly we're halfway through the season. Things could change. Maybe it starts with this week. Just I'm at the point where I'm not going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Well, the Mahomes-Steph sort of parallels continue. Like last year, we were like, oh, it's just going to be Steph. They're going to be totally fine. And then they struggled, and they were kind of like the 6th, 7th seed for a long time, and then they fell into the play-in, and they got knocked out immediately. Yeah. And, like, that just feels like that's where we're headed with the Chiefs. They, like, somehow, like, scrape enough, and they just slip into the playoffs, and then they just get smoked. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's Vegas, I'm sure, would love to have the Chiefs in the playoffs because they'll probably be favorites in the first round and then get blown out. Um, Quick trivia question on this game. How old do you think Derek Carr is? 30. Nailed it. Good for you. I, I would have guessed, like, 28, probably. Well, that's not too far off. Well, I know, but, like, I saw 30, and I was like, wow, Derek Carr's 30. Good for him. Still, I can't... D- uh, did did you see... I think they were in the red zone six times, and they didn't score on four of those against the Giants? Look, it's a problem, okay? <laughs> it's like... All right. We, we've seen some just completely wonky red zone stuff this year. It's because, like, and this is what you should do, like, teams keep getting put in, like, fourth and one or fourth and two situations, and they go for it, which you should do, but then they have, like, the one game where they're, like, over for 4, like we saw with, like, the Chargers a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, last game of the weekend, Los Angeles Rams 7-2 and two on the road to face San Francisco 49ers 3-5. and five. And I've seen a lot of charts that show Jimmy G is one of the worst quarterbacks uh, of the 40-plus we've seen this season. Uh, Niners here plus 3.5. I'm an idiot and I feel gross. I'm taking the Niners plus 3.5. Back-to-back home underdogs. To close out the weekend because I hate myself and I'm going to hate watching this game. But I think what we've seen with these divisional games, is the NFC West of any division, I feel like any underdog it has a chance to win the game, no matter what the matchup. I feel like it's been the same way going back 10 years. 10-point uh, underdogs, whatever. So, I mean, we saw it last week where the Cardinals really didn't make any sense to win that game, but they did, and they won dominantly. The Niners should have no business winning this game or being in it because the Rams, I'm sure, will be coming back with a vengeance, and uh, somehow the Niners will find a way because it's the NFC West. Cool, I'm locking the Rams. Fire Kyle Shanahan. <laughs> wow. That's where I'm Some at. Kyle on Kyle hate. Why Why do we continue to be like, oh, Kyle Shanahan is a great coach. He's like, he just, he's had one good year. And granted, they made the Super Bowl. Everything worked out perfectly great. They didn't face like hardly any adversity that year. Yeah. Good. We can see what happens when you have a whole lot of talent on a team and you don't have any major injuries and everything goes great. Kyle Shanahan's system, very good. I think Kyle Shanahan's just in a spot Lewis, I think everybody in this world has a ceiling, right? You are going to rise up, and if you get elevated one spot above your ceiling, it's a disaster. I think that's where we're at with Kyle Shanahan. Great offensive coordinator, bad head coach. And a lot of this is due to what seems like John Lynch just doesn't 
ever say no to Kyle Shanahan despite being his boss. So you run into these issues where Kyle Shanahan is just, like, given all of the power, and then you have the Niners just being... <laughs> They've been bad every year except for one. I don't want to sugarcoat it here. It's not like they were going, like, 8-8. Eight and eight. Right. You know, they were they were just bad. So I hate this Niners team. Three and a half is a lot of cake for me. Love it. Locking the Rams, coming off a loss, going into a place where San Francisco hasn't won since 2019. Please. I think, well, this game in particular, especially the emphasis and focus being in primetime, I think leads a lot of uh, – interesting narratives that will go into week 11 i mean of course if this game is close and they cover or even they win the game with jimmy g it's like he always man it's like every fourth game he'll put together a decent game and it's just enough to keep the job i think alternatively we could see him being so bad that trey lance comes in this game and then we'll see how that performs i think I think it does say a little something, the fact that Jimmy G has been so bad for the last month since he's come back from the injury, and Trey Lance is still not getting playing time. Right, and then they traded up for him, and this was Kyle Shanahan's guy. We're taking Trey Lance, and it's just like he's completely not ready to go, so we're going to keep rolling out James G. So, I mean, it just begs a lot of questions because it's like, well, okay, if Jimmy G is really this bad and the game plays out like you think it does – does Trey Lance come in? It does it if he does anything. If he doesn't do anything, what does that mean going into Week Eleven? Because then you're three and six, and it's just like at what point do you really just want to look forward to the next season? If well, you have to start giving your young guy lumps, right? Like just get him in there. If he's bad, so what? You guys are bad yeah. totally. So well, I I you know having said all that, I think there's probably a twenty. I'd say a 25% chance we see Lance in this game. It's either going to be garbage time or, you know, Kyle's going to just... Well, that, that's the other thing is, like, week one we saw, like, Trey Lance run a handful of plays, right? And he, like, I think he threw a touchdown or maybe he either ran a touchdown or he threw one. I think he threw a touchdown back in week one. And then they just, like, other than the game they had to start him, he just hasn't played at all. Well, I think he's been injured. He was injured... Uh, the week well, after, he has, but like week two, he wasn't injured. He just didn't play. Look, I mean, Kyle Shanahan may have supplanted Bill Belichick as the most frustrating, trying to predictable coach. Don't you think? Kyle Shanahan's doghouse is so deep, and he will just throw in anybody who like trips yeah. during a practice play. It seems like you're going in the doghouse, never gonna see you again. Yeah. All right. Look, I want to look. I want. I want to do this, Lewis. Okay. Kyle Shanahan's 32 and 40 for his career. Let's throw out the Super Bowl year they went 13 and 3. Let's throw out the year before they went 4 and 12. His best year and his worst year. He's 12 and 20 in those other two years. Yeah. It's 375. So, like, what are we doing here? I mean, it's a very good point. Uh, I mean, I think we'll just see how the rest of the season plays out. But I, for the most part, I'm on board. What's I, I mean? You've got the Niners plus three and a half. What's the most likely outcome to you in this game? I know you're just you're going straight contrarian, and I appreciate it. I get it. But what do you think is the most likely outcome in this? I game? think it's a super close game. I think the Rams defense still struggles a little bit. I think it's twenty one twenty Rams, and Jimmy G just does barely enough to keep the team in the game. Uh, but it's mostly it's mostly the defense and a little bit of Jimmy G. Okay, so you think Niners cover is the most likely outcome of the game? Uh, as opposed to what? As opposed to, like, the Rams winning by 17. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm taking the three and a half. Okay, well, I just, I didn't know they're, they're like, 13%, so I just thought maybe you were going straight contrarian, which, you know, again, I appreciate it. I think the most likely outcome here is the Rams to score victory. All right. Fair enough. Uh, any, what else do we need to do before we get out of here? Uh, we need to dog of three and a half or more to win outright. Uh, I won last week. I'll go, I think you're, you're the Seahawks. <laughs> I just realized, like, we could get Russ and Seahawks plus three and a half. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to take, I'm taking the Saints. All right, I'll take the Seahawks. Fair enough. I think, and what is that line going to be by kickoff? If it's if it's Russ v. Jordan Love, is it going to be like 
one and a half at best. I would think so. And I'm going to feel really gross because it, it seems like a super obvious play. Highest scoring team. Uh, I won again last week. I'm killing you in that. It's the only thing I'm doing well. And I don't, like, who cares? Uh, I'll take, gosh, I don't feel great about anybody here. Uh, I'll take the Ravens. Okay. I will take... Keep in mind, the Colts were the high-scoring team last week, and they played on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, I'll take the Cowboys. Didn't you pick them to not cover? No, you picked them to cover. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Sorry. Uh, my week-to-week bet, I'm going to have to come up with something off the cuff here. Uh, I'll take Rams 17-plus point win. All right. You've already got mine, right? Mike White, three turnovers? Yeah, Mike White, three-plus turnovers. Yeah. Going against the White Lotus. I can't believe you. Look, I, I mean – Everybody, these guys can come in and have great games. So we saw it with Tyrod Taylor. He looked good for like a week and a half to start the season, and then everybody had these expectations. So, so who you got in Survivor? I'm gonna try to uh, log into mine here, so I can like do my actual one. But I, I did pick correctly last week. I'm nine and zero so far in this one. Oh man, um, Cowboys! If you got them. I think I, I don't think I picked the Cowboys yet. It's like impossible to sign in. Do you have to sign in to Survivor every time yeah, on the app? Yeah. It's really terrible. Yeah. It's really bad. Can we can we just do better? Um, oh God, I. Oh, okay. I'm gonna take. I'll take the Cowboys. All right, fine. Let's do it. Okay. Does that wrap it up for us? That does. All right. Perfect. Uh, so if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. Ring the bell, leave a comment for Kyle. He loves it. All the all the good comments and the bad. And uh, mostly the bad. I enjoy the bad. I want to com- I want to combat. Yeah, people. you can email us at three point play podcast at gmail Find Kyle at Twitter on Twitter at kverska seven. I'm at tpp sweet lou. Other than that, until next week, Kyle seize the cart. Good luck out there, everybody. Thanks for watching.